Hey guys, it's Liz. Welcome back to the channel where we mess up our upload schedule because we were playing Minecraft again. Hope you're making the most of it. Today I wanted to do another reading of my original story that I've been working on. I haven't done that in a minute and I've had several chapters uploaded. If you would like to keep up with that, it is on my website in the link in the description. Thanks. Adam's interdimensional watch reads 1010. Al and Hen found themselves in a large campsite. They saw a few dozen people exercising and doing target practice. A man approached the couple and introduced himself as Smitty. Are you interested in joining the XCOM team? The couple shrugged. Sure, what's that? A flying object blotted out the sun. It landed not so gracefully in the dirt, the fans sending a layer of dust flying. The exit ramp lowered and a broad-shouldered figure stepped down. Central, we got two more for you. They're, um... What are your names again? Al and Hen introduced themselves. Central Officer Bradford had salt-and-peppered hair and the age lines of a man who invested his whole life in the military. He led the couple into the aircraft he called the Avenger. This is Rebel Pump... This is Rebel Punkson. She's been with us since XCOM started in 2013. She'll be giving you a tour of the facilities so I can head back to the command center. Bradford went back to work, leaving the couple with a red-haired woman with an unusually cheery disposition. She had white irises and a scar across her left eye, but the twist of a smile never left her face. The soldier led the team to the advanced warfare center, which was full of injured soldiers. Rebel's smile dimmed. We recently had a really tough mission. It hit us hard, but we have, a, we have great equipment to keep you safe. It's not going to happen again. Al and Hen followed the soldier to the bar. She poured them a couple drinks and started a more personal conversation with them. So, where do you guys come from? Another dimension, I assume? Al and Hen gawked at her. How did you know? We get a lot of those. You know Princess Peach? Of the Mushroom Kingdom? She's our lead specialist. I'm guessing she doesn't get to use her tech skills a lot when she's getting kidnapped in her own dimension. I'm escaping my father from my own dimension. There's no telling if he knows that I've fled my own world, but I know that he's after me. Hen swirled the glass in her hand. I don't want to inherit the throne. And I'm basically just a bodyguard until he's dead, Al responded. Well, let's get you started on your training. Al, it looks like you have a pretty sweet blade. I'm not going to take that from you, so we'll send you to the Guerrilla Tactics School as a ranger. And you, princess? Come with me. Al and Hen separated. Al went into a typical gym with some trainers. Hen, on the other hand, entered a dark facility that an engineer monitored. He trained her in the abilities of psionics, a new field of training for XCOM soldiers. The training turned her hair white and eyes purple. When she expressed her concerns about her new appearance, the engineer assured her that it's temporary. The two had barely started training before being sent on a mission in East Africa. Al had been outfitted in an exosuit, which allowed them access to a single-use rocket launcher. She kept her sword along with a new magnetic shotgun. Half the team stood tall and confident, but the other half shuffled in alignment for their outfitting. Al noticed Hen's hair first. What did they do to you? They told me it's temporary. Hen's eyes shifted downward. You look good. Very, uh glowy. The couple smiled at each other and got on the Sky Ranger. They sat across from each other trying desperately to remain calm on the way to the mission. Rebel assured them that things will work out as long as they keep a cool head. For this mission, Princess Peach is hacking a laptop in the city. Rebel Punkson and Florence Ant the Machine, a soldier with the sour look of an evil twin and a burn scar on her face, were equipped with the toughest weaponry of the group. A new sniper, Klaus, awkwardly sat in silence by himself. The team enters the city and immediately notices two vipers and a codex. A codex is a metallic feminine form that appears to be phasing in and out of existence at all times. The concealed team lines up behind cover, guns ready to fire. Hen starts the team off with a psionic rift that panics the codex and damages the vipers. The codex splits in two, and one creates its own rift that disables everyone's weapons. The team scatters and finishes off the pod with secondary weaponry. Now the team regroups and heads towards the laptop. 
Hedden took cover on a rooftop nearby, but everyone just stayed near the sidewalks. Klaus remained on a separate rooftop, weapon drawn. Once Peach caught sight of the laptop, two Archons noticed the team's position. An Archon has a masculine form that ends at the hips, propelled by fire jets. They cover their faces with helmets and wheeled scepters, creating an intimidating silhouette. Peach noticed something off about one of the Archons. Instead of the marble white body, the Archon had red flesh and more intricate ornamentation. Central expressed his grief over the communication systems. This was the Archon King, the crown jewel of Dr. Volan's experiments. Peach put her trust in her team to take care of the beast, so she extended her concern for the primary mission objective. She hacked into the program with great ease, freeing up the team from their time-sensitive problems. The Archon King moves extremely quickly, making himself witnessed to the rest of the squad. Florence lobs a frost bomb at their foe. Al, get off that car, Rebel yells out to her fellow ranger. Al had just enough time to adjust her position before the Ar Archon's jets melted the ice. Before he could react, Florence launched a shredder rocket at the beast, removing much of his armor. Al utilized their heavy weaponry to further shred the monster's armor. The monster responded to this insult by swinging his scepter at the nearest soldier. His metal weapon cracked Peach across the head, making her ears ring and skull shake. Al carefully aimed their own rocket at the beast. The blow seared through the king's remaining armor while stopping just short of hitting her fellow soldier. Archon King roared. He soared into the sky, summoning the warning lights of a missile attack. Now that her foe had been shed of his armor, Rebel launched her spare axe at the beast. She managed to land a powerful shot at the king before his attack landed. Missiles rained down on the team, blowing up the car that Al had previously taken cover behind. The ground under Hen disappeared, dropping her onto the floor below. Flaming Rebel crushed her lower body. Her pulse pounded in her ears. In the blur and smoke surrounding her, Hen heard the distinct twitter of Peach's gremlin as it released a refreshing mist over her. Many of her cuts and bruises patched themselves, but she couldn't bring herself to stand up. She remained semi-conscious near a wall until the battle finished. Hen woke up in the advanced warfare center, still reeling from her injuries. Al sat by her bedside, holding her hand. The engineer in charge of the infirmary didn't look up from his clipboard to tell Al that Hen lost her leg. The rubble severely damaged her lower left leg, resulting in what he called a knee disarticulation. Al pulled back the sheets to see that Hen had gauze bandaging where half her leg should have been. The princess finally opened her eyes and turned toward Al. The weary, blue-haired soldier broke the news to Hen about her leg. Hen said that her leg still ached from the battle, despite its absence. I just got a message from Shen. I'll be right back, the engineer said before walking away. Al's fingers locked with Hen's. The couple sat in silence, feeling the gravity of the situation. I almost lost you, Hen, Al said, tearing up. I swore to protect you and you almost died. Hen remained silent, tears streaming down her face. What is she supposed to say? She pressed her lips to the back of Al's hand. The head of engineering, Shen, entered the room. She was a lanky Asian woman who was flanked by a gremlin she named Rover. The engineer overseeing Hen's recovery started tending to the other soldiers in the ward. Hello, Hen. I have good news and bad news, said Shen, giving one last cursory glance at the clipboard. Bad news? Bad news is that we had to amputate part of your leg. The good news is that we have amazing technology to help you recover. So what's next? Shen placed the clipboard back on the bed. I'm going to start working on a prosthetic leg for you. The alien tech that we have now makes a very intuitive prosthetic. How are you feeling? Hen gave a tight-lipped sigh. <sighs> Just got to get through it, right? Keep me updated on what I have to do next, I guess. Thank you, doctor. Shen nodded and left the room, her robot friend trailing behind like a puppy. Al spent the next several minutes describing what happened on the battlefield after the Archon King blasted everyone. They started getting really excited and leapt out of their chair to describe the team did to the last Archon. How long ago was that now? You got hit almost just as hard as I did, Hen asked. Oh, like a week ago now, 
It's crazy to think that I had multiple fractures and I'm already walking around again. This gave Hen a great deal of relief. From her understanding of amputation, it takes years for some people to recover, and fitting a prosthetic doesn't even work half the time. After several days of development, Hen's prosthetic leg was ready for fitting. The technology on hand made it possible for the socket to adjust to weight changes without issue, and her remaining tendons and ligaments fused with the mechanics of the prosthetic. Other than the pain of having her body parts attached to metal and then putting her weight on it, the recovery process was relatively simple. Shen worked very closely with Hen to make sure the princess, su the princess successfully gained the ability to walk again. Rover hovered near the prosthetic to spray a pain-killing mist, allowing Hen to put her weight on her new leg. This is incredible, Shen. Thank you so much. Hen teared up again. After mere days of phantom limb pain, physical therapy, and cosmetic insecurity, Hen was almost ready to run and exercise again. Al kissed the princess's hand. You already looked beautiful, princess, but now you look super cool as well. Come with me to the bar. Hen gently hung onto Al's arm as they walked to the bar. Princess Peach and Rebel leapt from behind the bar to congratulate Hen's recovery. Peach managed to find ingredients to bake a cake, which confused everyone because no one knows where the ingredients to real food is anymore. Florence rested coolly on her bar stool, sipping her drink. The team clinked glasses. Good job, Hen, you're one of us now, Rebel cheered. Everyone gave their scar stories. Florence's face had the healed over scar of a grenade going off too close to her face. The princess has broken almost every bone at least once, which resulted in several difficulties with moving. Rebel had a small slash across her face from a scuffle after XCOM disbanded the first time. Her irises actually used to be brown, but a powerful psionic attack bleached them white. She also has to wear a Muton's respirator while on the field to make up for her diminished lung capacity. Fellow princess, will you stay with us for a while? I gave up my kingdom for my freedom too, Peach asked. Al and Hen looked at each other. Will they stay with XCOM to defeat the alien threat? Meanwhile, Hen's father roamed a pleasant pasture, void of conflict. Rolling green hills draped the scenery with pastel colors and flowers. The earth checkered with different shades of brown and palm trees soaking in the delightful sunshine. The king saw neither a threat nor his daughter. So I think that's about it for the story for now. Thank you guys for listening to all that. I'm really trying hard to keep up with that story because I do want to create a, a finished work out of that piece, I do want to see the, the beginning, middle, and end with that story. And I guess I can talk about this piece for the last, like, minute or so. I struggled greatly because I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to play with just having bright colors as, you know, just have everything else grayscale, but it didn't seem to pan out the way I wanted it to. I was having trouble with the line art because my pen wasn't arcing correctly and just 800 excuses. It seemed that all of my tools were trying to sabotage me because I don't know if you guys see it very well whenever it was on there, but the eraser was erasing uh, colors. So like, <laughs> instead of erasing, it was just adding colors. I don't know. I don't know if it makes sense. But if, if you see me struggling, then that's what was happening. I'm kind of happy with it. I like it. But I think we're coming up to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and forgiving me for uh, not being super consistent with my upload schedule. I try to upload every Tuesday, but I have a new job, so it's probably going to be every Wednesday because I have a different work schedule now. So thank you guys so much. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video. I will be uploading regularly, hopefully. <laughs> and I just sort of post my digital art progress while 
doing sort of a podcasty sort of deal. So that's kind of what I'm selling to you right now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.